Dear brothers and sisters and friends, we welcome you to the groundbreaking ceremony of the Grand Junction Colorado Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As assigned by the First Presidency of the Church, we recognize Elder Chi Hong Sam Wong of the 70, who, provi who provi presides at this groundbreaking service. Elder Wong is accompanied by his wife, Sister Carol Lu Wong. We recognize Elder Frederick Bali of the 70. He is accompanied by his wife, Sister Robin Bali. We also recognize President John Reese and his wife, Sister Janet Reese of the, Denver, the Colorado Denver South Mission. My name is Craig Stagg. I serve with my wife, Nancy, as the coordinators of this groundbreaking event. Elder Wong has asked that I conduct these services. We extend our appreciation to those who have served on committees preparing the ground and the area. The committee members are Brad Swenson, Paige Storheim, Aaron Hart, and Jean Booth. On April 4th, 2021, during the Sunday afternoon session of General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, President Russell M. Nelson made the announcement that a temple would be built in Grand Junction, Colorado. I had great personal excitement and gratitude, which was followed by many phone call, calls and text messages from family, friends, and members of the church. Over the ensuing week or two, the same excitement and support came from the community on the Western Slope. It was wonderful to feel the community's support. Three weeks later, on April 26, 2021, I received a phone call at four in the morning, informing me that the Fruita Chapel, Fruita Church building was on fire. For the next two and a half to three hours, I watched as, as the members of the Lower Valley Fire Department and the Grand Junction Fire, fire Department fought a raging fire. About that time, the on-site captain from the Grand Junction Fire Department came over and gave me a hug. I felt a sweet spirit come over me along with three thoughts. One, we have a loving Heavenly Father who cares and loves us both as a group and individually. Number two, the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are resilient and that their faith in and devotion for our Savior Jesus Christ would not waver. In fact, it would be strengthened. And three, that our wonderful communities of Fruta, Grand Junction, and others would show great love, support, and care for us. And that has happened. We thank you for that support. We recognize government, educational, religious, and media leaders who are present with us today. And we recognize and appreciate all the individuals and families who are participating live here or viewing these proceedings online. We will begin with an invocation by Tom Mingus, followed by a talk by Morgan Mantlow. Following that, we'll hear a musical number, On This Day of Joy and Gladness by a Stringed Ensemble, arranged by Andrew Fouts, after which we'll have two talks given by Gerald O'Dwyer and Bryce Cleghorn. We will then have another musical number, Let Zion in Her Beauty Rise, directed by Marcia Waugh. It will then be our privilege to hear remarks from Elder Wong, followed by, by a dedicatory prayer. After the dedicatory prayer, Zoa Taylor will offer a benediction. After the benediction, we ask that you please remain seated as we participate in the formal ground banking activities. Our kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we're grateful to gather this day in celebration of this groundbreaking, the Grand Junction Temple here in Grand Junction, Colorado. As a covenant keeping people, we're grateful for this opportunity to be part of this great occasion. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, for the blessings the gospel brings into our lives. We're grateful for the opportunity to participate in the in all temples throughout the world and for the special opportunity to remember the special ordinance and covenants that we partake as we participate in the temples wherever they are. We ask a special prayer upon those who are going to speak to us today that the Spirit might touch them and that we might be touched by their message. And again, we give thanks for this this beautiful day, and for the Savior, thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
the announcement of this temple is something I've prayed for um, for as long as I can remember. The answers to those prayers didn't come exactly when I wanted them to, but the timing was absolutely perfect. Um, even as heaven's timing always is, even if I didn't understand it or realize it at the time. Heaven heard the prayers of that very impatient little girl <laughs> and knew the exact moment when the answer to those prayers would mean the most, have the biggest impact on my life, and when I would more fully understand the love our Heavenly Parents have for us. Elder Valerie V. Corden said in the language of the gospel, it is not enough just to talk to our children about the importance of the temple. They must see us making room in our schedules to attend the temple as frequently as we can. This is one of the many things my parents have been amazing examples about. Temple attendance has been something they've always made time for, even when it didn't seem like there was enough time. In the temple, we have the opportunity to receive blessings and knowledge from our Father in Heaven. We can receive the assurance of loving family connections that will continue throughout eternity. As President Nelson has said, we learn to see the Savior as we understand Him. We comprehend His work and His glory and begin to feel the infinite impact of His matchless life. As President Nelson announced the plans to build this temple and many others, he said, ordinances of the temple fill our lives with strength and power available in no other way. I have felt that loving assurance, power and strength on many occasions while worshiping in the temple of God. And I know that this knowledge is available to all those who come closer to our savior and worship worthily in the temple. Over the last couple of years, circumstances beyond our control have reduced or limited the frequency of our temple attendance. With the announcement and construction of this temple, we are being given the opportunity by our loving Father in Heaven to change that. We are being given the, the, the blessing and the opportunity to come closer and to see our Savior Jesus Christ on a more individual level. We will see those blessings manifest in our personal lives and in the lives of those all around us. I pray that we don't put off temple attendance due to convenience. My prayer is that we can see ourselves in the temple and attend as often as circumstances allow. I am so grateful for the infinite atonement of our Savior Jesus Christ and the matchless love of our Heavenly Parents to ensure that we have the ability to get to know them better as we worship in the temple. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
That was beautiful. It's been 70 years since my family moved here to Grand Junction. Mom and Dad and, a, a, and my three boys moved to Grand Junction. We moved here from the high country of Colorado looking for a better life, a new job, a warmer climate. Little did my parents know of other changes that were in store for us. In that same year, 1952, the missionaries, Elder Hess and Elder Wright, God bless our missionaries, helped our family and taught us the truths of the gospel. My parents and older brother were baptized in October of 1952. We were loved, taught, and fellowshiped by the wonderful members of this valley. My first experience in the temple was in 1954. I was six years old. My parents were being sealed for time and all eternity in the Logan, Utah temple. My brothers and I were es escorted into the sealing room and we were all dressed in white and we knelt at the altar of the temple. Mom and dad were already there and we were sealed as a family for eternity. As I turned 12 years old and received the Aaronic Priesthood, I was able to go to the Manti Utah Temple and be baptized for the dead. In, 19, in 1971 in the Manti Temple, I took out my own endowments, did my own work in the temple, and knelt at the altar and looked into the beautiful brown eyes of my bride, Myra, and we made covenants between us and God and we were sealed for time and all eternity. Joseph Smith was taught by the angel Moroni in a vision. The angel Moroni quoted from the teachings of Malachi, and he will plant in the hearts of the children the promises made to the fathers, and the hearts of the children shall turn to the fathers. Myra and I and our children, and now our, even our grandchildren, continue to attend the temple, doing the work of our of our fathers, as Malachi said. I have been blessed to kneel at the altar across from Myra and look into those beautiful brown eyes as we are being sealed for grandparents and great-grandparents, aunts and uncles and others of our ancestors who did not have the opportunity to do that when they're in their lives. Now we will be able to do this work right here in Grand Junction, Colorado we'll have our very own temple. Praise God. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, whose house will be built here. In, in, amen. amen. In the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple, the membership of the church was given the following challenge. Organize yourselves. Prepare every needful thing. Establish a house, even a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith, a house of learning, a house of glory, a house of order, a house of God. This new house of the Lord in Grand Junction can bless our individual lives as well as the collective lives of friends and family members on both sides of the veil. This temple will also be a blessing and a powerful protection to all the communities in Western Colorado. There are many here with us this morning attending these proceedings. From the other side of the veil, we welcome each of you here and wish to thank you for your sacrifices in consecrated service, which have laid the groundwork for the events of this day. Thank you. Before there was ever a stake in Western Colorado, our people attended the Manti Temple. When the Denver Temple was built, we traveled there. We were assigned to the Vernal Temple when it was dedicated. 18 years ago, we were transferred to the Monticello Temple. And like most people across the earth, we have always had a temple within a reasonable travel distance from our homes. When the Grand Junction Temple is dedicated, we will no longer face the challenges of Salina Canyon, Vail Pass, our beloved Douglas Pass, or have to drive through the desert to the Monticello Temple. When we no longer have the ob obstacles of mountain passes, 
dangerous winter driving, hours of travel. We will confront other uh, potentially more formidable challenges. The challenges we will face at that time will be those of complacency and the distractions of the world around us. It is important to take time to enjoy this life, but we must also be about our Father's business. Let us commit at this very moment not to return this gift unopened. We read further from the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple. And we ask the Father, and we ask the Holy Father that thy servants may go forth from this house armed with thy power, and that thy name may be upon them, and thy glory be round about them, and thine angels have charge over them, and from this place they may bear exceedingly great and glorious tidings, in truth unto the ends of the earth, that they may know that this is thy work, and that thou hast put forth thy hand to fulfill that which thou hast spoken by the mouths of the prophets concerning the last days. This house of the Lord will be built to the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be a place where he can visit. It will be a place for, uh, where those who attend can feel his presence. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is our Savior and our Redeemer and our intercessor with the Father. Of these truths I testify in his holy name even that of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. A special welcome to all of you to come today. You need to know that English is my second language. And I've never done this thing before. So bear with me. And I don't usually talk with a script, but I need to make sure I thank everyone. So if that's okay with you, I'll read those, make sure I cover everything and then 
I would talk probably a little bit freely to talk about what I felt as we we came yesterday. Would that be okay? So here's the script for. So we are pleased to welcome distinguished civic and community leaders. You know, I don't know who you are, but I recognize some of you, especially I was told the chief captain or the chief of the police. That's how I can recognize you because you are in a uniform. <laughs> the other ones look different. So thank you. And men and women of all faith of God to come together today. It's a special occasion. It is a special occasion. I'll tell you why in a minute. Before I start, I would like to recognize and give thanks to all those who have worked tirelessly to prepare for today, especially brother and sister Stag, who has been helping to uh, make this happen, and I know many others. The ground has been beautifully groomed. As I recall, I asked President Reese to have a missionary to come take video for me. I was trying to come from Denver the other day, I mean the other time when I was in Denver. But I, don't, I didn't have enough time, so I say, President, can you send a missionary can take a video or picture for, to show me? And I watched the video. It was very different from what I've seen today. <laughs> Either he went to the wrong place, <laughs> or you did a great job. And I know that you did a marvelous job to make this happen. And uh, the ground has been beautifully groomed, convenient parking and comfortable seating and has been provided sound. The sound system, when I was here yesterday, I was amazed how in an outdoor like that, the, the sound of the song and everything went, can go so well. You, you need to realize a lot of people put in effort to make it happen, to, to have such a special occasion. And also the backdrop of trees. We were surprised that they had trees in here. Uh, in the middle of the whole thing, but thank you for doing all that. And, uh, and your effort will contribute greatly to this sacred nature of this event. Now I can talk freely. Did I cover everyone in case I didn't mention you? Now here's the blanket that I thank all of you who has made whatever contribution. As you know, in the church, we have meeting house and temples and we have lots of temples, but comparatively to the meeting house, we only have a bit over 200 that is functioning or has been announced since the church was restored 200 years ago, roughly. So we have only 200 of these occasions that would have happened. But many of them are still, you know, President Nelson just announced the 17. My wife was surprised. He thought was he was going to allow one when he said, I'm going to announce a new temple. He said, oh, it's only one this time. But he said, a new temple in each of the following locations. And it was 17 locations. And some of, at one time I was having lunch. Well, that's one of the benefits of the general authority 70s. We would have lunch with President Nelson, but it's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Then he told us, say, whoa, at the coming conference, I'm going to announce more temples. And some of the names, you don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so to have the assignment from the first presidency to come to a temple ground dedication, it's a big thing. It's less than 200 people have done it so far. And I'm a short, small Chinese <laughs> coming to the center of the whole United States right here in Grand Junction. I would not have dreamed that to happen when I was baptized in 1982 as a convert to the church. I don't even speak a lot of English then. And now, until I went to Canada, Vancouver, then I add the A at the end, because the Canadian A, they want to do that all the time. So I'm, I'm still learning. To do that is a special thing. Yesterday we came by, we, we drove from Salt Lake City about 11 in the morning. We arrived here about 4 o'clock, and then we checked into the hotel, and then Elder Bolly took us back here to look at the, the ground. It was wonderful. Sister Wong and I came from Hong Kong in a four-minute walk square. So we walked four minutes, we walked four minutes, we walked four minutes, we walked four minutes. Make a square, we would have 40,000 people there and two shopping malls. 
five family doctors, three dentists, 30 restaurants that I can go to within a few minutes. So we don't see the sky because we are all high rises. We have more people living in, uh, living below, no, above the 14th floor than below the 14th floor. Yes, yes. We have a lot of tall buildings. I think we probably have the most number of skyscrapers in, in, in the world in Hong Kong, very crowded. So when we came here yesterday, we look at this sky. I have never seen something like that. You know, the sky can surround us. We only see narrow strips of the sky in Hong Kong, if we are lucky. And that's, that's a big thing. I felt the spirit and all that. But today, you make the difference. It's even better. Yesterday was good. But today with you on this sacred ground, it's totally a different thing. The same thing will happen when the temple would be finished and dedicated. The temple would look great. Look, look at here, the roundabout. Everyone would see this. Look at the rendition in the picture of the temple. People would come and admire. They would feel peaceful. But more importantly is what's happening inside the temple with the people that who are ready to get in. And many of you will be those people. So, so get ready. It's the pearl and the box. The box is beautiful, but more importantly is the pearl, and you are the pearl. So at this special date, I just want to let you know it is a worldwide church. The Savior is going to come again the second time as, his, as He did the first time. But this time will be in great glory and majesty. It's no small thing. It's not a story. It is what it is. I, I know that is true because otherwise you won't see me here today. Because I think I will still be in Hong Kong. I love Chinese food. I do love Chinese. I actually, elder body and sister body were so kind to took us to the uh, to a Chinese restaurant last day. It was good. <laughs> well, many of you know Chinese food well. Then, if you are loving, it was good. But because the gospel blessed my life with a good education from BYU Hawaii. A wonderful wife, Sister Wang introduced me to the church, 1981, to an activity, then I, to the missionaries. I was baptized on Valentine's Day, 1982, 40 years ago. That changed my life. I went to BYU Hawaii, graduated with two degrees, went back to Hong Kong. We have three boys, and then eventually we have a girl as a surprise after six years. We call her name Joy. As my last name is Wong, so for Christmas letter that year, we say joy to the Wongs. <laughs> and, and we are three wise men. <laughs> and the Sister Wong's first name is Carol. And my name is Sam. And you can find Sam in Christmas, the word Christmas. If you read like a Chinese, go the other way around. So we have Christmas Carol, three wise men in our family. We have joy to the, joy to the Wongs. And we have six grandchildren. The first one, you probably guess, her name is Loel, first Loel. But after that, we can't make any more make up any more stories because the other names are kind of strange. They have been Americanized, so it's no longer a Chinese name that I can talk about. We hope and pray that you will find this a joyful day. Remember, I hope the Spirit has touched you in some ways, because your faithfulness, you stay to be righteous. You have a great desire to have a temple here, and you pray for it. But not just you, it's also the people in the community. They will receive the blessings too. But you, if you are members of the church, you have to step up to become better. Become a great example to them so that they know why, why these people dress up to go to this place. What are they doing? 
what is so important? Why they only have 200 plus? But by the way, I think we're going to have more. I don't think President Nelson is going to stop. And he's very healthy. And he, he's actually healthier than me. So more of the temple will come. In Asia, we want more of the temples over there. So the people don't, they don't need to stand on the train for 48 hours to go to the temple. To many of them, it's once in a lifetime experience. But to you, in a couple of years or whatever, when the temple is completed, I was told the furthest away should be within an hour, right, to come to the temple. So come often. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. And now I would do the prayer. Heavenly Father, we are deeply grateful for this beautiful plot of ground which has been selected for the purpose of building thy holy house. Our hearts swell with joy and gratitude as we assemble this day as thy sons and daughters. We have gathered to witness this holy event, even the dedication of this temple site with the turning of the ground afterwards. Under the authorization and direction of President Russell M. Nelson, and acting with the authority of the Marquesic Priesthood, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we dedicate this sacred ground as the foundation for the construction of the Grand Junction Colorado Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Heavenly Father, please temper the elements. May thy angels watch over and bless thy work in this sight. We pray that those who labor here will be inspired by thy spirit. We pray that their talents will be enhanced and that their work will be exceptional of exceptional quality. This is a day of dedication not only of this temple site, but for each of us in our individual lives. As counseled by President Russell M. Nelson, in like manner, it is now time that we each implement extraordinary measures perhaps measures we have never taken before, to strengthen our personal spiritual foundations. We pray for the rising generation, especially, especially those who are here today. May they remember this day as a spiritual landmark in their lives. May they continue to choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Bless those who are preparing to come back to the church will do so. When the temple is completed, that they will be ready to enter to thy house for more blessings. Please also bless families with a refreshed commitment and enthusiasm for fully living thy gospel. President Russell M. Nelson recently reminded us that temples are a vital part of the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ in its fullest. Ordinance of the temple fill our lives with power and strength available in no other way. Nothing will strengthen our spiritual foundation like temple service and temple worship. We pray to remember that whenever any kind of uphill occurs in our life, 
the safest place to be spiritually is living inside our temple covenants. Knowing that now is the time for us to act, to prepare, and to become. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday. We are grateful for the atonement of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessings of the promised resurrection. As we dedicate this holy ground, we pray that we can maintain this positive spiritual momentum in our lives. In the name of our Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now proceed to the ceremony groundbreaking. We'll have three different groups that uh, will come up. I'll now start with group one. And uh, you can come up now. I'll read your names. You'll join Elder and Sister Wong and Elder and Sister uh, Bali. And then Kayleen, if you can bring everyone up. It'll be Dave Edwards uh, from Orshalom, Joan Brighton from Baha'i, Kayleen Mortensen from Given, Carlene Goldwaite, American Lutheran, Reverend Wendy Jones, Unitarian Universalist, Sherry Cole, Grand Valley Peace and Justice, uh, Che Bomator, uh, Muslim uh, Congregation, and Sister Karen from Catholic Outreach. And we'll probably need to keep coming over here. And I don't know if there's any science to this, but for, <laughs> for uh, the ph photographer's purpose, on Elder Wong's lead, you'll take a shovel full and then hold it up while they uh, we need to keep moving over. Is there another shovel that way? There are more shovels down there. We, we've got more shovels there. By the third group, we'll do this well. <laughs> Again, on Elder Wong's lead, and if you can take a shovel and, and hold it, we have to get some pictures of this. Uh, go. Perfect. Now we'll go to group two. Sister uh, Storheim will help with this. We'll have Elder uh, Wong and Sister Wong continue here. We'll take the shovels and uh, you take your seats. We'll be uh, S Scott McInnes, Mesa County Commissioner. <laughs> Doug Schumacher, uh, Police Chief. Joel Kincaid, Fruita Mayor. Betsy Bear from Community Hospital. Lori Randall from uh, Family Health West. And Ann Wright from the Sentinel. and I'll join you in this one. Now we'll move to group three. It will be Elder and Sister Long with uh, President and Sister Reese from the Denver, Colorado South Mission, President and Sister Beckstead from the Grand Junction Stake, President and Sister Yost from the Montrose Stake, President and Sister Kennedy from the Rifle Stake, and President and Sister Burton from the Grand Junction West Stake.
they aren't very even, so why don't we move the burdens who just moved to one side back to the other side? They got up early. It's a long story about their trip they got uh, finished today. So, Okay, on Elder Wong's lead. You invite anyone you'd want. Those uh, stake presidents, if you want to take your seats. Younger than 15 years old, can you stand up? Younger than 15.